What's going on everyone? David here. Super happy to be here today because we got news. Finally, it's been a while. We had those little Persona Xbox rumors a while back that I wanted to talk about. But today, we have three topics that just came out in the news. So, some of them you might not even be aware of. You've seen the title. Today, we are going to talk about Persona 3. And I really think an announcement is coming because I think Persona 3 is coming to PC in the near future. We're talking a couple of months here, so we'll talk about that so you'll want to stay until the end. The Atlas official merchandise store is also coming back and that's awesome. Or not. And we'll also talk about E3, of course, I'm sure you've seen that bit of news. E3 is coming back this year, that's been confirmed for a while now, but now it's official, we have schedules, we have which publisher is going to be there, when it's going down, etc. So we'll also talk about the fact that Sega and Atlas is not mentioned in the schedule and why I don't think that's a big deal at all. So. If you enjoyed the video, as always, drop a like, it helps a ton, and don't forget to drop a comment below to let me know what are your thoughts when it comes to those news. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the Atlas Merchandise Store that is coming back. Now, Atlas just celebrated their 35th anniversary as a company, and one of the things that they announced that they're bringing back for the celebration is the Atlas Official Merchandise Store. The official store Twitter's account was named Atlas Goods since its creation in 2013. And if you're not aware, the Atlas Store closed down on October 31st of 2019 after around two years of activity. Two days ago, alongside the confirmation that they're bringing back the store, they also renamed their Twitter page and it's now going to be called Atlas Goods. They also confirmed that they will reveal new official merchandise in the near future for their upcoming games and also for the 35th anniversary of Atlas as a company. As a big Atlas fan, it's easy to get excited about that store. I have a big shelf here full of Atlas merch and games, so of course it's exciting. I want to spend my money on useless stuff. <laughs> so that's exciting. But I really have to mention that the last store that they had for two years was definitely not that great. Uh, and I'm being nice here. Um, items were always getting delayed from their initial release date. Uh, there was very low stocks. Pe items were getting out of stock super fast. Uh, almost no restocks for most of the items. And it's the list goes on. So it definitely wasn't that nice. Now, when they closed down the store in October of 2019, they did say that the store would come back in another form in the future. So I think they probably rethought about their ideas and how they want the structure of the store to be. So while I don't have any predictions about how the store is going to look once it releases, I do think they're going to improve on it. So let's keep a close watch on that. I definitely will cover the news once we get more information about the Atlas store that's coming in the near future. Oh, and also, if you want to hear more about the old Atlas store, I highly recommend checking Maka's video on the subject. I'm sure you all know Maka, a fellow Megaton content creator. Um, I found Maka from his video on the Atlas store and it's a super good video, very funny and very informative. So check the link down in the description below if you want to check his video on the Atlas store, which I highly recommend. Now let's jump into the next subject, which is E3 2021. Now we got the lineup, there's a lot of publishers that are going to be at E3 this year, even if it's a digital show. And I'm going to be really honest, and I'll take this L. I did say that I was not expecting a lot of publishers to be at the show this year because it was a digital event. And I'm just going to quickly explain my reasoning behind this before we talk about Sega and Atlas. The reason why I thought there wouldn't be as many developers at E3 for this year as a digital event is simple. It's because whenever we hear publishers talking about E3 and interviews and stuff like that, they always say that the cool thing about E3 is that they get to talk with journalists, they get to talk with employees of the gaming industry behind the scenes at a physical E3. They also get to show their games hands-on to the public. Demos, build a big booth and stuff like that. So that was the main appeal for publishers at E3. Now being a digital only event, they're basically gonna take their own show that most publishers already have, such as Nintendo Directs, Sony State of Plays, Sony's not at E3 by the way, Microsoft Events, um, Bandai Namco now has their show, Square Enix, Ubisoft Presents, there's a ton of online showcase Nintendo Direct style that publishers are already doing. So to me, it was like, why would they pay those publishers? Why would they pay to show their stuff at E3 if it's digital, if they can do it themselves without any fees on their YouTube channel, for example, or on Twitter, etc. 
But I was wrong because a lot of those publishers are back at E3 this year. And for the consumer, it's cool. So I'm happy to, to have been wrong on this one. Awesome. It really feels like the publishers are still having faith in, in E3. So really cool. E3 is a fun event and I'll make sure to cover the show once it comes up. Now let's talk about Sega and Atlas when it comes to E3. As you can see, they're not in the schedule for this year at E3. And I want to talk about why I don't think it's a big deal. I had a lot of people just retweeting the announcement from E3 saying stuff like, oh, that means we're not going to get Persona 25th anniversary announcements at E3. We're not going to get SMT5 and stuff like that. And I'm not saying those people are wrong. I'm just saying that you shouldn't dismiss the possibility just because Sega and Atlas are not on the schedule. Let me explain where I'm coming from with this. So if you look at the last few years for E3, it's been a while since Sega and Atlas were there as a big publisher where they had their own showcase, where they have their own press conference, where they had their own booth, etc. So I really don't think that the fact that they're not on the schedule means that we're not going to get any info on any Sega and Atlas games. Let's look at the past E3 years that we got for just, just for just to prove my point. Now, the last E3 that we got, of course, last year was canceled because of the pandemic, and it was too soon for them to reorganize it as a digital event. In 2019, Sega was nowhere to be found on the schedule, just like this year. But they still showed a lot of games at the show, including the new hardware. They actually showed the Sega Minute the Sega Genesis Mini at the event. They had a physical booth with a lot of games, including games like Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, Catherine Full Body for Atlas, and much more. So there was still a physical booth, even though they were not on the initial schedule for the event. So that doesn't mean much. We can even go back further. Well, let's look at 2018. Same thing. They were not on the schedule. There was no Sega press conference, but they still had a booth with a lot of games at the show, including Yakuza 0 on PC, Yakuza Kiwami 1 and 2, Shenmue 1 and 2, and a lot more. They had a ton of stuff this year. Now, of course, this year, they're not going to have a physical booth. So what I think we'll see is I think we'll see Atlas and Sega games in other publishers event. The first thing that comes to mind, of course, is um, Shin Megami Tensei 5, which is still scheduled for a 2021 release. I think this is very likely, this game is very likely to be at Nintendo's show. Nintendo's promoting the hell out of this game, and it is a Sega and Atlas game. My point here, my point here is basically that just because Sega and Atlas doesn't have the focus on them, they don't have their spot in the schedule, it doesn't mean that we won't see any Atlas and Sega game at E3. I'm not trying to raise your expectations, I'm just trying to be realistic here, and it's not realistic in my opinion to just dismiss them right away because they're not on the schedule. Hell, we can even see if Microsoft again is trying to get exclusivity for Yakuza, we can even see the next Yakuza game at Microsoft's show, who knows? So I'll be looking forward to Sega and Atlas games at E3 this year. Let me know down in the comment sections below what you think about that. Now my last point is very exciting for a lot of you guys and especially now that the PlayStation stores are closing down. Why? Because I think Persona 3 is coming to Steam soon and my big reason for that is that PC Gamer, they just announced that they're bringing back the annual PC gaming show alongside Games Radar. Um, and it's coming on June 13, 2021. Uh, you might ask me, what's what's the big deal? What is this all about? Well, last year, we also had the PC gaming show in June. And before that show, like a week or two weeks in advance, there was a ton of rumors talking about Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 that could be coming to Steam in the near future. Well, of course, during last year's PC Gamer show, we did get the reveal of Persona 4 Golden, which was coming on Steam on the same day. And until then, nothing's been shown or nothing's been confirmed or rumored when it comes to Persona 3. It's pure silence since then. It's the 25th anniversary of the Persona series this year, Persona 3 is not on Steam yet, and the PC Gamer show is coming back. Once again, keep your expectations in check, I've, ne I've not heard anything behind the scenes when it comes to that, so I don't know any type of background information, but looking at last year, looking at the schedule for this year, looking at the number of announcements that we got for the 25th anniversary of the Persona series on April, at the moment of recording this video, I think it's very really likely to assume that we will probably get Persona 3 on Steam during this event, especially with the success of P4G on Steam last year. So that's all when it comes to those news for today. Uh, lots of interesting topics, very excited on my part for E3. Guys, don't forget to ring the little bell icon, I will definitely cover E3 on the channel and I will post in my community section on the channel 
whenever my what, what my schedule looks like and which event we're gonna stream and stuff like that so it's gonna be super exciting and also let me know what you think is it likely to you for Persona 3 to be coming on PC uh, at PC Gamer Show in next June? Let me know what you think. And also, are you hyped for the Atlas Store, which is coming back this year? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you like the little news episode, don't forget to drop a like. And as always, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.